Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to the second lesson in Week 8. We are continuing to learn more about organic molecules. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about carboxylic acids and esters, which are very interesting organic compounds. Let's go back to Amira to hear about the next homologous series, the organic acids, and how to use these acids to make esters. Now, I'd like to introduce you to carboxylic acids. This group of molecules also contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They all have a double bonded oxygen in combination with the hydroxyl group we saw in the alcohols. This functional group is called the carboxyl group. Can you see a pattern in the names of these two molecules? When there is a carboxyl group on an organic molecule, the end of the name changes from the usual E at the end of the backbone molecule to oic acid. So, this molecule based on ethane, and now with a carboxyl group added, is called ethanoic acid. By the way, this is the same acid that is made when wine is left open so that air can enter the container. Yeast and bacteria use the ethanol in the wine and oxygen from the air to make the sour tasting ethanoic acid. This is the same process used to make vinegar. So the next time you add vinegar to your chips, think of the organic chemicals you're eating. Give this a try. Draw and name a carboxylic acid containing five carbon atoms. Well, you know that a five carbon molecule is pentane, so I'm sure you drew this molecule based on pentane. This is pentanoic acid. Remember when drawing the molecule, first draw the backbone or longest carbon chain based on the name of the backbone. Then change to fit in the functional group, the carboxyl. So here, pentane has become pentanoic acid. Hold on to that drawing of pentanoic acid. We are going to see if we can do anything interesting with the chemical. Let's go to the lab and see what Philip is doing. Hi, Philip. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my lab. We're going to do some organic chemistry together using carboxylic acids. We're going to use ethanol and pentanoic acid to make something new. This is called a reflux apparatus. We heat the mixture in the bottom of the round bottom flask until it boils. The gases rise into the condenser where they become liquid again by condensation and fall back into the mixture. Refluxing allows us to keep the reaction hot and boiling without losing any of the liquids inside. So let's get going. First, we place some alcohol inside the flask. And some pentanoic acid. Finally, we add a few drops of sulfuric acid, being careful not to touch anything. This acts as a good catalyst for this reaction. Now, we heat up the mixture and let it boil and reflux for 10 minutes. Now, we must distill the mixture to separate the parts of the mixture.
ethanol boils off easily at 78 degrees. The mixture will boil over here, past the thermometer and into the condenser, where it will turn into a liquid and collect here. We'll continue to heat the mixture. Can you see the alcohol boiling off on this side? As we start to collect the part which boils at around about 140 to 145 degrees, we start to see and smell a different product. Hmm, I wish I had smell-o-vision. This stuff smells great. It has a very sweet smell and reminds me a little of apples. This sweet smelling product from this reaction is called an ester. So let's get this straight. When a carboxylic acid like this reacts with an alcohol like this, we get an ester as a product. That's pretty cool, but I think Amira will explain more about these great smelling compounds. Now to name these esters. We have to know which alcohol and which carboxylic acid the ester was made from. It is quite easy if we look at the chemical reaction we saw in the lab. Here, the alcohol ethanol reacts with pentanoic acid. The pentanoic acid loses its hydroxyl group to make water. The product is an ester. In this case, the ester is a pentanoate. When carboxylic acids make esters, their names change. The end of the acid changes into O8. We always name the part from the alcohol first, in the same way we do for a branch. Here, the part from the ethanol is an ethyl group, so it forms the first part of ethyl pentanoate. There is a difference, though. The words are separated by a space. Can you think why? The words in ethyl propanoate are spaced because there is an oxygen atom separating the two carbon chains. Now try to name the acid and alcohol used to make this ester, and then try to name the ester itself. You can identify the acid by looking for the double bond to oxygen. So we can see that ethanoic acid was used to make this compound. Now we name the chain attached to the ethanoate by finding the alcohol it came from. The alcohol was three carbon atoms long, so it must have been propanol. Now it will be easy to put together the pieces of the puzzle. We used ethanoic acid, which becomes ethanoate. The three carbon atom chain is a propyl chain and makes this propyl ethanoate. The esters made in this way are very useful to the food and cosmetics industry because they smell a lot like natural fruits and foods. Because of their sweet or pleasant smells, it is possible to flavor food so that it tastes similar to the natural items we find in natural foodstuff. In the cosmetics industry, esters are used as environmentally friendly solvents in nail polish and to add fragrance to perfumes. Next time you splash on some perfume or aftershave, try to picture the structure of these interesting organic molecules. I'm sure you found this a fascinating lesson.